Poker combines our theoretical knowledge of the game with our own personalities, and that's why people can play the same hands very, very differently. On the flop, somebody with a lot of spin and go experience may recognise that this will be a range bet flop. Three cards above a nine on the flop, always very good for the button, especially when they're all three Broadway cards. A less experienced spin and go player may see they have a pair and just elect to try and take it to the showdown. This would be missing out on an opportunity to already fold villain from better hands. A half pot sizing on a board structure that hits our range so well is already enough pressure to generate folds from some bottom pairs. Even if the villain calls too many of these, we can use this to our advantage on future streets by applying future pressure. On these boards where the flop was 3 cards 9 or higher, the button's always going to maintain a very strong range advantage on any kind of blank turn. This is because the button has all of the hands like sets and the best two pairs that the big blind can just never have and we should really be leveraging this especially when playing against competent players. The big blind's range is going to be extremely well defined and capped, limited to medium to weak top pairs and a whole bunch of king x and worse. The combination of the button's range advantage and the big blind's capped range means anything the button holds that's lower than a jack should be considered as a potential bluff. This means we're going to take bluffs from some pocket pairs and we're also going to very often use a 6x because it nicely blocks the newly opened up two pairs. Being able to recognise these differences is what can set apart some of the best regs from regs that slip into autopilot in too often. After the big blind has called our seabet and called our barrel, we know what his range is. It's going to contain some flushes which are clearly never going to fold. It's going to contain a decent chunk of ace x which may be fairly player dependent. Some players may call us with all their ace x. Some may be more willing to let some of them go. And then it's going to have some missed pair plus draws. Hands like king queen, king 10, queen jack, jack 10 which make up a decent portion of his range. So when considering the bluffs we should take, it's going to be ideal if we can block the flush and unblock the pair plus draws that missed. So not having in our hand a queen or a 10, it's going to be optimal when it comes to bluffing. So once I got into this position in the river, my pocket fours with the diamond satisfied all the nice bluffing properties. So I decided to go for it, force him to fold hands like king queen, queen jack, jack 10, and really put him in the cage if he has a hand like ace two no diamond. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to see more hand breakdowns and come join our Discord. You can find the link for that in the comments below.